In this video, I want to discuss delivery, specifically for public speaking and delivery for speeches. So um, I really want to talk about first delivery styles and then some tips for both vocal and physical delivery. So there are four basic delivery styles for speeches, some of which we use more often than others anymore. Uh, it's not very frequent, but you may be called upon to use a manuscript speech at some time or deliver a manuscript speech. And that's essentially where you have the whole speech, just like this word for word right in front of you, uh, and you're delivering it from um, a, a script. And note, I don't say reading it from a script because you know, you, delivering a speech is not reading something. It's delivering it. You may have every word there in front of you, but you still have the challenge of making it sound conversational. And, and that can be, that can be quite difficult. It takes a lot of rehearsal and a lot of practice. But there you have a, a manuscript speech, for example. Another type of speech that's used less frequently now than it used to be is what we call memorized speech. And this is what your notes would look like for a memorized speech because it's all delivered from memory. And it can be a challenge too because, you know, you're not tied to notes, which is great, but you are tied to remembering every single word as it comes up. And if you forget one, then you're in danger of losing track of the whole thing or whatever. But we don't use memorized speeches quite as much as we used to anymore. It's not an expectation. We can use notes now, and that's that's sort of commonplace practice. But uh, but just be aware that it is a type of delivery style. You may also have an impromptu delivery, uh, which would be where you have very little to no preparation time, uh, or at least very limited preparation time, to put together some ideas. You're not going to have time to really sketch out a very detailed speech, and your notes may look something like this, and just, just enough to remind you what basic bullet points you wanted to discuss, and then you have to go from you know, from the top of your head from there. But uh, it's an impromptu speech, and we give these all the time. So you're sitting in a meeting, and your boss says, what do you think of that? Well, you, that's sort of an impromptu speech, right? You're kind of put on the spot. Hopefully you have some materials prepared, and you're, you know what you're talking about there, but, uh, but it's still going to be kind of off the cuff in an impromptu speech. And those happen quite a bit. Ideally, if you have time to prepare for a speech, you're going to deliver what we call an extemporaneous speech. And so an extemporaneous speech is, is thoroughly prepared, as, as prepared as a manuscript or memorized speech. It involves a great deal of research and preparation and outlining and different things like that. But you deliver it not from uh, a scripted uh, manuscript or, or from memory or anything like that. You deliver it from this basic bullet point outline, which, again, is thoroughly prepared, but but the wording comes to you in that moment. So you have this, this, just a sketch of an outline here that's, that's thir again, thoroughly prepared, uh, but not scripted out word for word. So that it gives a more conversational feel. It also gives you a little more freedom if you need to make changes, you know, midstream or whatever. Not to say you're going to change, you know, you flip-flop on your topic, but if you need to change your approach because you find the audience isn't responding or whatever, extemporaneous style will give you the freedom to do that as opposed to manuscript or memorized where you're just, you're locked into whatever you have and that's it. So, um, so a lot of times in classes and in other prepared speeches, you're going to be delivering what we call an extemporaneous style speech. So those are the four delivery style types and, and delivery styles for speeches that we see uh, at different times in, in public speaking. So really we want to focus the rest of this video on the two categories of delivery. We have both vocal delivery and physical delivery. So we're going to break down some tips for each of those for you here in the rest of this video. So vocal delivery, as, as you hear all the time, it's all, oftentimes it's not what you say, but how you say it. And that's what we're talking about with vocal delivery. Now, language has to do with the words that you choose when you're speaking. That's language. That's not delivery. That's that's the, the verbal uh, choices that you make in terms of language. Vocal delivery, though, has to do with how you say those words. Uh, you know, maybe how quickly and how, you know, so we're talking here about rate, we're talking about tone, we're talking about a variety of different things that we'll get into here. So vocal delivery, some tips for vocal delivery. First of all, use some vocal variety. What we mean by that is adjust your volume, for example. Uh, depending on what you're trying to convey and, and where your audience is at, you can adjust the volume to get a little softer or get a little louder. Now, of course, you want to be loud enough to be to be heard. You don't want to go below that in terms of volume, and you don't want to go so loud that you're you're driving the audience nuts, that you're boring them, that you're you're you know boring into their heads or whatever. But somewhere in between there, you can find some variety in terms of of volume, and you can also find some variety in terms of pitch. So we're thinking here about pitch it would be like the keys on the piano, not how hard you're striking them. That's volume, but pitch would be the different keys. You get different notes. You get some way down here. You get some way up here, right? Uh, on the piano, keys on the piano or keys on a different uh, instrument. Uh, so we're talking there about pitch and you want to vary your pitch because if you don't, you'll start to talk monotone and you'll sound like a robot or you'll sound like the teacher from Ferris Bueller when Ben Stein does that 
classic monotone. To, that's not what you want. You want some pitch. You want to vary your pitch a little bit appropriately depending on what you're talking about. And the same is true for rate. You need to, to vary your rate. Um, if you're talking about something very exciting, then speed it up a little bit. And if you're talking a little more somber, then maybe slow it down. Now, again, there's a, there's a balance here between going slow enough that people can understand you and fast enough that you don't lose them so they get bored and get off track or whatever. But, but somewhere in there, you can vary the rate to make your speech more interesting as well. And don't forget about pause. Every once in a while, you need to hit that pause button. Uh, it can be used for dramatic effect. It can be used to separate quotes, uh, to separate a quote from what you're saying, to take just a brief pause before moving on, then that can separate that quote from what you're saying. So pause can be an effective um, form of vocal delivery as well, an effective uh, uh, method for vocal variety there. So in addition to vocal variety, you want to try and match your emotion and your enthusiasm with the message. Again, if you're talking about something exciting, then talk a little louder and talk a little faster and, and in, you know, vary your rate and, and pitch and, and things in that way. If you're talking about something a little more somber, then slow it down, bring it down, bring the volume down, bring the rate down and things. So you need to match, you need to consider what you're trying to convey and match your vocal delivery with that message. You also need to be sure you're properly pronouncing words. That can have a great deal of impact on your credibility if you're mispronouncing words on a regular basis. Um, at the very least, sound confident when you pronounce things, like names and things, just to say it. Out. And people, you know, most of the time when you say something, people are going to be like, well, that's how you pronounce that. Right? Uh, no, but common words and words that have a very specific pronunciation, you need to get those very clearly. You need to practice it. Uh, look it up, practice it so you know how to pronounce it, and so that you can do it effectively, and that'll help you with your credibility as well. You also need to articulate your words. And this is going to feel a little strange for many of us here in the United States. We get a little lazy with our mouth in particular and how we form those letters. Um, but you got to think back to if you were ever in choir, if you know people are in choir and they look a little silly because, because they're moving their mouth a little bit more, that's what you need to do. It needs to feel a little bit uh, uncomfortable. If it doesn't feel uncomfortable, then you're probably not doing it enough. So you need to articulate your words so that the audience can can understand clearly what those words are and, and can differentiate between those words. And also remember the importance of dialects. Um, depending on where you're at, your your accent or your dialect may help or hinder you, um, depending on uh, whether your dialect matches that of your audience. Um, so it's not to say that any dialect is better or worse than another, but it'll help you manage a connection with the audience and and uh, help them relate to what you're saying a little more if you can have a dialect somewhat similar to theirs or, and remember that language may be different and word choices not the different thing but um, remember the, your, your audience keep your audience in mind okay so those are our tips for vocal delivery so what about physical delivery when we think about the body and how we use the body in public speaking here are some basic tips for physical delivery first of all you want to be sure you're making eye contact now that that does not mean staring at your audience and making some you know especially one person completely uncomfortable but your eyes should be on the audience more than they're on the notes or more than you're on your visual aid and things. The, the primary just for your eye contact should be with the audience. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, you want to make sure that your eyes are on the audience more and, and you can move the eyes around the audience. Okay. You don't have to stare at any one person, uh, but move your eyes around the audience appropriately, but, but maintain that eye contact. You need to dress appropriately. And what we mean by this is um, don't dress up so much that you look out of place, but don't dress down so much that people can't take you seriously either. You need to consider the audience, consider what you're speaking about and all those things, and put together an outfit that makes sense for that particular occasion and that audience and that topic and, and for you as a speaker as well. Uh, also avoid things like um, graphic t-shirts. We'll, we'll touch back on that here in a minute, but you need to be dressed appropriately um, so that the audience will take you seriously and so that they're not focused on what you're wearing. Ideally, the audience won't even notice what you're wearing. It'll just kind of blend in because it, it fits the topic and fits the occasion. Stand confidently. Now, that does not mean you need to adopt the uh, superwoman pose or whatever, but you need to stand confidently. Whether you feel confident or not is irrelevant. Stand like you're confident. Have good posture, solid posture, feet about shoulder width apart, you know, and, and own the stage. Really take control of things, even for that just that short amount of time. Gesture naturally. Now, what we mean by that is if, if you're somebody who talks with your hands, then talk with your hands. Don't feel like you have to be bound up by a straight jacket, right? As long as those gestures aren't so big and so in the way that they're keeping the audience from focusing on what you're saying, then you're fine. Use your hands. If you're not somebody who uses their hands, don't feel like you have to 
you know, put in hand gestures just to have them in there. If you go back and watch the first President George Bush, uh, you know, he, he clearly his speech writers and, and delivery people were saying, you got to get your hand out here and do something. It looked totally unnatural for him, and he's just not somebody who speaks with hands. So uh, it didn't work. You gesture nat naturally, again, as long as, uh, you know, that is to remove distractions. As long as you're not distracting the audience with your gesturing or with whatever else, then you're fine. So use your hands as long, you know, and gesture and, and do things as long as it's not distracting the audience from what you're saying. Feel free to move freely about the stage. You know, you can move freely about the cabin and the airplane. You can move freely about the stage if you have the opportunity to do so. Uh, as long as you're not, you know, pacing rapidly back and forth at the distraction of the audience. But feel free to move around a little bit. It can help expend some of that nervous energy and, and get some of that out of the way. It can be very helpful to you as a speaker. So move around a little bit. And smile, for Pete's sake. Smile, please. Uh, I can't emphasize this enough. The audience wants to know that you're not in pain up there, that you are, you are enjoying this process, you're excited about what you're talking about, and so, so smile a little bit. Okay. Uh, so just some miscellaneous uh, delivery tips as we kind of wrap up here. Um, first of all, first and foremost, again, we want to eliminate distractions. That's the, the whole key for, uh, for, for delivery at this point and beginning public speaking is to eliminate any distractions. So in order to do that, first of all, uh, ditch the gum. you got to get rid of the gum. It, it's annoying for the audience. You start smacking it around, and they can see it in your mouth, and it causes you to not articulate as well, and just for all kinds of reasons. Be sure you get rid of gum and hard candy and things out of your mouth. Get all that out of your mouth before you start speaking. No hats. It just doesn't look good. It's not a good look unless it has something to do with what you're talking about. Even then, it should only be for a limited amount of time, but uh, but really, just, just no hats when you're speaking. Uh, no graphics on your t-shirts and, and, and so again be thinking about what you're wearing is this a funny message on this t-shirt yeah i think it's hilarious both because i love dinosaurs and because it's you know it's just funny uh, but the whole time that person is speaking i'm going to be looking at their t-shirt and that's what i'm going to be thinking about that's what i'm going to be drawn to i'm not going to be paying as much attention to what they're saying so it's a distraction so wear something more plain don't wear something that's going to distract the audience in that way try to eliminate fidgeting as much as possible. I mean, those, those are nervous habits, so the more comfortable you get speaking, the easier that will be to do, but try and um, make mental notes and notes in your note cards and whatever you need to do about uh, fidgeting as little as possible and eliminating some of those distractions. You also want to avoid, you know, dancing and swaying back and forth and things like that, and just, just the distracting movement. Again, feel free to move freely, but, but make those movements make sense. You don't want the dancing and things that's going to, things that are going to distract the audience. And then, as much as possible, you want to eliminate those vocal fillers um, and uh, things. Those are things that come up when we're not sure what we want to say next. So it really has to do with um, preparation. And the more prepared you are, the more likely you are to have fewer vocal fillers. So, so preparation is key there, but then just some concentrated effort. You're going to have some ums and ahs and things like that, and that's fine. You're going to have those, but try and keep them to a minimum as much as possible. A couple things about adapting to your location or your situation. Um, first of all, know how many audience members you have and, you know, what that's going to create for you as, as a speaker. Um, the larger the audience, typically the more formal the presentation is, is a general rule of thumb, but uh, uh, we need to adapt to the number of audience members. You also need to adapt to the size of the room in terms of your movement and, and where you can be located, where you can be seen, how easily your visual aids can be seen. We'll have to adapt to the size of the room and the size of the audience. Um, the seating arrangement. Have people at round tables they have their back to you only to adapt to those types of things and and just push through and do the best you can there what's the technology available do you have things like a computer that are available there and are you going to use it uh, what kind of software are you going to have are you going to have access to the internet or powerpoint those types of things are you going to be able to use a projector which will, could possibly help with um, visual aids but also creates another wrinkle what if the projector doesn't work or what if it stops working then then what do you do so uh, be cautious the, the technology is a double-edged sword are you going to need to use a microphone? And if so, does that mean you're going to need to be a little more tied to that podium? Or is it a microphone that you can move around with you, either holding on to it or, or have a lavalier mic or one that you, you know, like the Justin Bieber type mic that you can wear on your head and things, a uh, headset, but uh, you need to be aware of those types of things. Is there a podium? Are you going to be able to use that podium? Do you want to use that podium? It can, again, be a double-edged sword. If you do, remember that the podium is for your notes, not for your hands and not for your resting and not for everything else. Is there going to be a whiteboard, you know, that you want to use? I would encourage not to use whiteboard, but anyway. So in summary, be natural, be enthusiastic, be confident, be direct, and practice, practice, practice. 
If you have any questions about delivery or any of the other content, please feel free to email me. I'm always happy to answer emails. And uh, in the meantime, happy communicating.